بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Continue with the chapter of Siyam from the book Amdat al Fiqh of Imam Ibn Qudam al Maqdasi, Rahimullah Ta'ala. Before we continue, we'd like to do a quick review. So, if those brothers who are attending could come a bit closer so I can hear them with their answer. Last week, we took the definition of Siyam, the definition of fasting. What is that definition linguistically? What does it mean to fast from a linguistic perspective? To abstain, did you say? Yes, to abstain, imsak, to abstain. And technically, istilahan, what does it mean? Al imsak and asha'i maqsusa. Imsak maqsus, a specific withholding, which is fasting. An asha'i maqsusa, from specific things, right? Food, drink, and relationships with one's family. Fi waqtin maqsus, from the sunrise to sunset. Min shakhsin maqsus, from a particular person. Who is the Muslim, the baligh, the aqil, okay? This is what we said. What are the conditions, further to this definition, what are the conditions uh, for one to have it be obligatory upon him to fast? What are some of the conditions? The person, number one, must be Muslim. Must be sane, aqil, must have aqil. Baligh, must have balugh. What else? Huh? Capable, al qudra, okay? The person must uh, have capability. And as we took, but we didn't say specifically, uh, must be free of al muwani' must be free of those things which prevent them. Like, for example, the ha'id and the nufasa, okay? The one who's menstruating, this is something which prevents her from fasting. So the person must be free of these things. When, how do we know when the month of Ramadan starts? What did we say? A full moon when? Huh? At the end? Yes, at the end of 30 days, right? Uh, what else did we say? So if you see the moon, you see the full moon. Or if you don't see the full moon, what can happen? 30 of Shawwal you must complete. Or if it's a case, there's a third case which is peculiar to the Hanbali Madhab we said. That if it's the, the 30th night, right, and it, the cloudy sky, then the next day you fast ihtiyatan, you fast out of care that it might be uh, Ramadan, though you didn't see the, the full moon, right? Because it was a cloudy night, etc. So, another question a prisoner, may Allah free our prisoners, I mean, a prisoner, he fasts because he's unable to determine when the month of Ramadan starts. So he tries his best, exerts his best energy. He ends up fasting before the month of Ramadan. What's the ruling pertaining to his fasts? If it's before the month of Ramadan, we said not valid. And that which he does in the month of Ramadan is valid. That which he does after the month of Ramadan is also valid because it's like the qadla of the salah. Okay, they say qiyas upon the qadla of the salah. This is for somebody who's unable to determine. Okay, like a prisoner, for example. <coughs> Somebody's traveling. When does he avail the ruksa of uh, the traveler with regards to fasting? When, does he, when is he able to break his fast if he's a traveler? You want to say? I think you said past the city limits? Yes, very good. Once the person has passed the city limits, and if the journey is for 80 kilometers or more, okay? And uh, what happens if he's going to stay in his place of re residence for four days or more? If he intends to stay for four days or more, what's his situation then? Huh? The ruksa is no more. So as soon as he lands or reaches a place of his destination, if he intends to stay for four or more days, he's not allowed to break his fast, he has to fast. But the journey, yes, he can break his fast, okay? Uh, is it better for the person to uh, make fitr or to fast? According to our Imam and those who agree with him. Huh? To fast? What did the Imam say? He said, no, it's better for him to take the ruqsa, okay? This is the opinion of the Hanbali scholars, okay? The others, they said it's up to the person. If he's able to do so, then he should fast. Why should he fast according to the majority? Because he catches the fadila of the month, okay, catches the virtues of the month, and also it's easier for the person to fast along with the rest of the community, right? 
طيب. Last week I forgot to some, mention something which was very important pertaining to the, uh, the fasting itself, the niyyah of the fast, the intention pertaining to the fast, right? The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Ibn Majah, مَن لَمْ يُبَيِّتْ الصِّيَامْ قَبْلَ الْفَجْرِ فَلَا صِيَامَ لَهُ مَن لَمْ يُبَيِّتْ الصِّيَامْ قَبْلَ الْفَجْرِ فَلَا صِيَامَ لَهُ Okay, in Ibn Majah, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever doesn't make his intention, before Fajr, then there is no fasting for him. Okay, so the intention has to be there. Even if you do not get up for the suhoor by mistake, you have to have the intention before you go to sleep that you would get up the next day and you will fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The majority of the ulama, they say that each day you need to make the intention. Why? Why did they say that? That each day you need to make the intention. And other ulama, they say it suffices like the Maliki scholars at Sheikh Taymin, they say it suffices one intention at the beginning of the month. So what's going on here? The majority are saying each day, and then the Maliki scholars and Uthaymin rahimahumullah ta'ala are saying at the beginning of the month suffices. So each day, those who hold that opinion, they say because mustaqillah, ibadat al-mustaqillah. Okay, every day is a separate act of worship, which is the case, right? And those who hold the other opinion, they look at it upon being that the month of Ramadan is one act of worship, right? If somebody decides to break his fast, right? He intends to break his fast. There's a person intends to break his fast. But then he didn't find anything to break his fast with. What's his ruling on his fast? Huh? So he needs to he needs to make the fast up, right? That's what you're saying. Anybody else? He needs to make the fast up, Ahsant, because even though he didn't break his fast by eating or drinking or having a relationship, he had al jazm. He, he was serious in breaking his fast. He made the intention, right, for whatever reason. But he didn't find anything to break his fast with. So the point here, that the intention for you to have a valid fast must be a firm intention, okay? And if you make it the opposite way, a firm intention to break the fast, whether you go ahead and break the fast physically or not, your fast is still broken. طيب. And even some of the ulama, they said, التردد في النية. That, you know, somebody is debating with himself, shall I break the fast, shall I not break the fast? I'm finding it difficult, shall I continue, shall I not? They said even this situation is problematic according to a group of the ulama. So the important thing is with regards to the intention, you must have a, a sincere, solid intention to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where did we stop last week? Anybody remind me? Was it the third person that we were to, uh, speaking about uh, who, who it's permissible to break the fast? It's the third person, right? So the Imam rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Al-Hamil wal murda the one who is pregnant and the one who is breastfeeding their child are, al are allowed to break their fast, okay? So somebody's fasting, she's pregnant. Or somebody is breastfeeding her child, she's allowed to break her fast, okay? And you see, time and time again, this shows us how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful to His creation. Anytime there's difficulty, al mushaqqa tajlibu taysir. Anytime there's difficulty, you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives ease to His servants, right? So we shouldn't listen to those who are always attacking the Sharia, saying it's barbaric, it's backward, it's, it's difficult. It's not the case at all. It's very natural, it's very simple, and the rules are very easy to live with. So the Imam, he says, Rahimullah, Al-Hamil wal Mawda. إِذَا خَافَتَ عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمَا أَفْتَرَطَ وَقَضَتَ If this person who is pregnant or she is breastfeeding, if she is worried for herself, أَفْتَرَطَ she breaks her fast, وَقَدَتَ And she makes up the fast in its place. Right? What does she do? She breaks her fast if she wants to, because she fears for herself, her health, while she's pregnant or while she's breastfeeding. All she has to do is make up the fast. وَإِنْ خَافَتَ عَلَى وَلَدَيْهِمَا أَفْتَرَطَ وَقَدَتَ وَأَطْعَمَتَ عَنْ كُلِّ يَوْمِ الْمِسْكِينَ But if it's the case that they are now not worried about themselves, but they're worried about their child, maybe she feels because I'm not eating, I'm, I don't have enough nutrition to breastfeed my child or to feed the child in my stomach. So it's not the case now that she's worried about herself. It's the case, the second scenario, she's worried about her child. What did the Imam said? He said she breaks her fast, she makes it up, and then for each day that she misses, she has to feed a poor person. طيب? For each day she misses, she has to feed a poor, a poor person. Is there a th third scenario possibly? The first scenario I gave you, I said that she fears for herself. The second scenario I gave you, 
I said that she fears for the child, not herself. What's the third possible scenario? Huh? Both for herself and the child. Ahsant. So in this situation, the ulama say, it goes back to the first situation. Okay, the ruling is given according to the mother. That she only has to uh, make up the fast. Okay, she breaks the fast and only has to make it up in this third possible situation. And the Hanbali scholars, rahimahullah ta'ala, they say that the, uh, the feeding of the poor in the situation where she fears for the child, she has to feed for the poor person, right? For every day that she misses. They said this is upon the one who is responsible for the care of the child. Okay, responsible for the care of the child if that's the father or whoever it be in the family. طيب? They are the one who will do the feeding. And if they were to fast, the pregnant woman and the uh, breastfeeding woman, then their fasting would be valid. But it's recommended that they don't do that. La darar wa la dirar. One should not uh, harm themselves, nor bring about harm. Okay, as the hadith said. So it's recommended that if they find that it's going to harm them, then they should not do so. But if they do so, then their fasting will be acceptable. A rabi'ah. The fourth person, the fourth category of people, who it's allowed for them to break their fast if they find that they have the need to do so. al ajiz and Sawm, the kibr. The one who is unable to fast due to having old age. Okay, the one who's unable to fast due to old age. Or marad, la yurja Or somebody who has terminal sickness, a type of sickness that they feel they will not be cured from. Of course, every sickness can be cured by Allah Azawajal, but the sickness, you know, like uh, extreme form of diabetes, a type of cancer, generally we feel that this is not going to be cured. So the person, he's exempt from fasting. Imam al uh, he uh, collects an author from Ibn Abbasin radiallahu anhu, who said, رُخِّصَ لِشَيْكِ الْكَبِيرِ أَنْ يُفْتِرَى وَيُطْعَمَا أَنْ كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِسْكِينَ that it was made permissible for the elderly person to break his fast and for each day that he missed to feed a poor person. Okay? To feed a poor person. So we said here the Imam is saying that the elderly person who finds it difficult doesn't have to fast, rather feeds a poor person. And also the one who has a sickness which they don't feel that they will be able to uh, be cured from. So this person feeds for every day a poor person how much do they feed okay half a saw what was a saw we said okay four handfuls right so half a saw is what the person feeds in this situation there's a masala which is mentioned in some of the books of fiqh for example, Wabal al-Ghamama of uh, Sheikh Abdullah Tayyar in his explanation of Umdat al-Fiqh, he mentions that uh, some of the scholars, they say, some of the scholars, like the Hanbali scholars, they say that if the person who is elderly has to pay fidya, right? He doesn't fast. But if he's traveling in this situation, what does he do? Does he still have to pay the fidya? They say, no, he doesn't have to pay the fidya because there's no fasting while you are traveling. Therefore, the fidya is also exempt, okay? But Shaykh Taymin and others, they say, no, the fidya remains. Why? Because the elderly and the sick person of the, who is not going to be cured, fasting wasn't obligatory upon them in the first place. Aslan, there was no fasting obligatory upon them. And the fidya, it doesn't matter where you, whether you are resident or traveling. It, there's no difference, okay? There's no effect. So that's just an interesting masala. Next question pertaining to the, uh, the fidya, the feeding. When should it be done? Should it be done... Uh, in the beginning of the month? Should it be done at the end of the month? Should it be done every day? What do you think? When should these people who are not going to fast because they're too sick or too old, when should they do the feeding? Is it every day? Is it beginning of the month or end of the month? When they do it, it's convenient, okay? But the ulama, they say, لا يجوز تقديم الإبادة على سببها That you cannot proceed the act of worship before it's cause before its cause so the cause of the fidya is that you're not fasting so you shouldn't you cannot give the fidya before the fact that you haven't fasted so either what you do is that you do it every day or you wait to the end of the month and you feed the people at that time okay and also you can gather the people in one go and you can feed them in one go okay you can gather the people and feed for 30 days in one go 
The Imam he says, "Wa ala sa'idi man iftara al qada la ghair." And for all other types of people, apart from the four that he's mentioned, apart from the sorry, apart from the um, the one who has to pay the fidya, then all they have to do when they break their fast, all they have to do is make it up. Okay, all they have to do is make it up. But sometimes it's not enough just to make up the fast. They have to make up tawbah. Is they have to make a sincere tawbah to Allah Azawajal and other things as we are going to come to know. The Imam he says, "Illa man aftara bi jima fil farj." Except for the one who has relationship with his or her spouse, uh, a full relationship, right? Has a full relationship with their spouse, and this is one of the worst things that a person can do whilst fasting. That's why the uh, the kafara here is mughallada. It's a severe, severe uh, kafara, severe expiation, right? As we'll come to know in a minute. Um, so the person who has a full relationship with their family, then this person has to make the kafara. But the ulama, they say, the ulama, many of them, they say that even if the person doesn't have the complete relationship, meaning he's just playing around with his wife, right? In different ways. So he doesn't have the full relationship, but he still ejaculates. In this situation, still there's a kafara. Okay, he didn't have the full relationship, but he was doing other things which caused him to ejaculate with his wife. Then this also, there's a kafara upon that, right? And the Shafi'i scholars, they say no kafara in this situation. If the person was forgetful, nasi, the person was forgetful somehow that they were fasting, or they were compelled, forced uh, in, to have this full relationship, then according to the majority of the ulama, the Hanafi, the Maliki, and the Shafi'i scholars, there's no kafara. In the fact where they were um, compelled or they forgot, right? They say in this situation, there's no kafara. But the Hanbali scholars, they say there's still kafara. Why? Because they said an important rule, لَوْ إِفْتَرَقَ hal la wajib al iftisal. They said when the Prophet ﷺ, when people came to him and they said, Ya Rasulullah, we made this huge mistake. We had relationship with our families and uh, you know, this and that happened. The Prophet ﷺ, he didn't ask them questions. He didn't ask them like, you know, were you in a state of forgetfulness? Were you compelled? He didn't ask these questions. So if it was possible to separate the situation, then the Prophet ﷺ would have had to ask that situation, right? So this shows, according to the Hanbali scholars, that these excuses of whether the person was forgetful or not are not valid. The fact that it took place is enough for the kafara to take place. Tayyib, the Imam, he says, فَإِنَّهُ يَقَضِي That this person who does this uh, relationship with their spouse, a full relationship with their spouse, then what he has to do, he has to make up the day. That's the first thing, right? And on top of that, وَيُعْتِقْ رَقَبَ He has to free a slave, okay? He has to also free a slave. If he cannot free the slave, then he has to fast two months. Then he has to fast two months. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامْ شَحْرَيْنْ مُتَتَابِعِينَ Two months continually without any break but there are some times you can take the break not out of your choice for example if Eid falls between those two months then you can take the break and it doesn't affect right but if you took the break without excuse that means you would have to start the whole two months again right if you took the break without valid excuse you would have to start the whole two months of fasting again for the expiation but if it's due to an Eid or it's due to the fact that you had to travel you had no excuse then this is okay in terms of things which are allowed, permissible excuses for you to take a break. So the person has to free a slave. If he can't free the slave, he has to fast two months. If he cannot fast two months, then he has to do what? He has to feed 60 poor people, right? He has to feed 60 poor people. And the 60 poor people can be fed in one go. The ulama, they ask, they put the mas'ala forward, they said, is this ala takhir? Is it the kafara? Is it upon tartib, which means it has to be done in order, or is it ala takhir? Takhir means you can choose. Meaning to say, if it's tartib, it means that you have to first go to try and free the slave. If you cannot free the slave, then you go to the fasting of the two months. If you cannot do the fasting of two months, then you go to the feeding of the poor. If you cannot even feed the poor because you don't have the means to do so, then there's nothing upon you. Okay, that's if it's ala tartib. If it's ala takhir, it means that you have the choice. You can go to whichever of those kafaras that you want to do so. But the majority, they said, it's not ala takhir, it's ala tartib. It's upon order. You don't have the choice, you have to go through the order. If you cannot do A, you go to B, then C, etc. Right? The Imam he says, فَإِن جَامَعَ وَلَمْ يُكَفِّرْ حَتَّى جَامَعَ ثَانِيَةً فَكَفَارَةٌ وَاحِدًا 
So if this person has the full relationship and he doesn't make the kafara until he has somehow fallen into this situation again, right? Then it's only one kafara. So no matter how many times it happened, until you make the kafara, it's only one kafara for, those, for that amount of time that took place, right? And we should remember, like I said, this is one of the worst things you can do in the fasting in the month of Ramadan. That's why it's one of the most serious penalties, right? But if the person somehow is newly married, can't control himself, is in a different state of mind, and it happens to take place, then uh, one kafara is required for no matter how many times it took place before the kafara took place. But then the Imam he says, in kafara thumma jama fa kafara thaniya." But if he makes the kafara, he makes the expiation, but then happens to do it again for whatever reason, then it requires another kafara, right? Then it requires another kafara. So everybody the Imam who says it's obligatory upon them to have imsak and he makes this uh, act of intercourse, then this person has to make kafara. What does the Imam mean here? The Imam is referring to the people like, for example, the woman who becomes pure halfway through the day. Okay, according to this opinion, or the traveler who returns to his res residence halfway through the day or some hours after Fajr. According to this opinion, that that person in these situations that I mentioned still has to make imsak. They still have to withhold <coughs> from the things which can break the fast. They have to behave as though they are fasting. Therefore, if they fall into this act of the relationship, the full relationship, even though they weren't really fasting, they still have to make their kafara. Right? This is what the Imam is saying. Okay, this is the Imam's opinion. Others, what's another opinion we took last week? Can anybody remember? Of Abdullah ibn Masood. In the Athar in, uh, collected by Imam ibn Abi Shayba. He said, Man akla awl nahar akhirahu. Whoever eats in the beginning of the day due to a reason, a valid reason, then let him continue and eat until the end of the day. Meaning there's no imsak for that person. So if the person was eating due to traveling and he ended up returning halfway through the day, then he can carry on not eating. According to Abdullah ibn Masood in radiallahu anhu and who and others right but what did that imam say he said these people if they fall into the situation whilst they were having to make imsak then also they have to do a kafara even though they were not properly fasting right but they were making imsak due to the um, the honor of the day of fasting the imam he says وَمَنْ أَخْرَى الْقَضَاءِ حَتَّى أَدْرَكَهُ رَمَضَانَ آخر فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ غَيْرُهُ Somebody now, the Imam is saying, he has to make up fasts due to valid excuses, right? He missed the fasts in Ramadan and an amount of fasts. Now he's saying that this person can be one of two situations. The first situation is the person didn't make up these fasts until the next Ramadan due to a valid excuse. So this person, all he has to do is continue making up his fasts, right? But if the person made tafrit, tafrit is the person who was careless, lazy, couldn't be bothered to make them up until the next Ramadan came, then this person, as well as making up the fast which he still has left from the previous Ramadan, he also has to feed for every fast a poor person. See the difference? One person had a group of fasts to make up, he couldn't do so until the next Ramadan, meaning delayed until the next Ramadan. This person, there's nothing upon him or her except that they have to make up the fast. The other person who made tafrit, the person was careless, lazy, couldn't be bothered to make them up in time. This person has to make them up and on top of that, has to feed a poor person for each day. Aisha radiyallahu anha in Sahih Muslim, she said, كَانَ عَلَيَّ صِيَامٍ مِنْ رَمَضَانٍ فَمَا أَسْتَطِيءُ أَنْ أَقْضِيَهُ إِلَّا فِي شَعْبَانٍ أَشُغْلٍ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم. She said, I used to have fast that I had to make up from the previous Ramadan. And I wasn't able to do that until I reached Sha'ban of the next year because I was too busy taking care of the Prophet So here she's saying that there was nothing upon me except to make up the fast. Because in her situation, she wasn't careless, she wasn't being lazy. Rather, she was prevented from making up the fast due to being busy with the Prophet So if the person is busy, is excused, and they're not being lazy and careless, then they just have to make the fast up. If they're being lazy and careless, they have to make the fast up, and as well, they have to pay for every day to feed a poor person. And Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, no, there's no paying his opinion, there's no paying, because the verse in the Quran that mentions about uh, making up doesn't mention that there's a fidya, okay, in Surah Al-Baqarah. 
So make up from the period of other days. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, and no fidya was mentioned. Taib Imam, he says, وَإِن تَرَكَ الْقَضَاءَ حَتَّى مَاتْ لِعُذْرٍ فَلَا شَيْءَ عَلَيْهِ And if the person who needs to make up fasts doesn't make them up due to an excuse, like he had to travel, right? But then he dies, then there's nothing upon this person. So the person what? What was his situation? He had fast to make up, but he had a valid excuse for, for not making them up. But then he passed away, so now there's nothing upon this person, right? There's nothing upon this person, because he didn't make tafrit. And the majority of the ulama, they say that this person's fasting, you shouldn't fast on behalf of him. Why? Any idea? Number one, he doesn't owe anything because there was no tafrit. Number two, you couldn't do it for him in his life. Therefore, you cannot do it for him in his death, right? This is what they say. You couldn't fast on his behalf while he was alive. Therefore, you cannot fast on his behalf while he's dead. Okay, this is the majority of the ulama. They say you cannot do that. But Imam Nawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, from the imams of the Shafi'i Madhab, he said you can do so. Why? Because there's a hadith in Bukhari where Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu said, man mata wa alayhi siyam, sama anhu waliyuhu. Whoever dies and there is fasting upon him, then his wali, his close relative should fast on his behalf, right? Because they say that this is a, a debt owed to Allah Azawajal. But those who said, who said, who held the opinion like our Imam, no, they said that this is only in the fast which is a vow. If the fast was a vow and not the fast of Ramadan, then you have to do it. Why? What's the difference? They said the fast of Ramadan, the Sharia, Allah is the one, the one who made it obligatory upon this person. And because the person didn't do it due to an excuse, then there's nothing upon him. But the vow, the person made it obligatory upon himself. So if you've made it obligatory upon yourself via a vow, then that's the one that has to be made up. Okay? Or it's recommended highly to be made up. The Imam, he says, إِلَّا إِنْ يَكُونَ مَنْذُورٌ فَإِنَّهُ يصام عنه. Exactly what I just said. Unless the fasting was a fasting of a vow type, then it should be made up for this person. وَكَذَلِكَ كُلُّ نَظْرِ الطَّاعَةِ Likewise, when, if the person dies, and he had made a vow for any type of worship, to go Hajj, to go Umrah, to give charity, he made a vow. But then he died before he could fulfill that vow, then it's recommended that somebody from the relatives make that vow uh, up for him, that somebody fulfilled that vow that he made for him, okay? So the Imam, after finishing talking about this, he's going to talk about a very important chapter now. He's going to say, Bab ma yufsidu sawm. So he spoke about what makes the fast obligatory, right? He spoke about who is excused from fasting. Now he's going to speak about the issues pertaining to what would spoil the fast of a person who is fasting. Ma yufsidu al mufsidat or al mufsadat, ma yufsidu asam that which can spoil a person's fast. Now the usul, the foundation of uh, al mufattarat, the things which break a fast are three. What are they? What do you think? Eating and drinking and relationships with the family, right? Relationships with the family. Allah says in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, It's permitted for you in the nights to have those close relationships with your families. Of course, the wajh dalala the point of evidence is that if it's permitted in the night, means it's not permitted during the day, right? And then the rest of the kulu washrabu hatta yatabayyana lakum al khaytu al abyad min al khaytu al aswad min al fajr. Thumma atimu siyam ila layl. Eat and drink until the dawn is distinguished from the uh, thread of the night. And then continue with your siyam until the night, right? So there's no eating or drinking. Tayyib. So what did we say? The asul of the things which can break your fast are three, right? We said eating, drinking, and jima. And then there's others which are made from ishtihad and qiyas and matters like that, right? And other ahadith. But the foundations are these three. So the imam, he says, وَمَنْ أَكَلَ أَوْ شَرَبْ Whoever eats or drinks, this breaks their fast. Eating or drinking breaks their fast. Just like that? Eating or drinking? No. There's three considerations that have to take place before the ruling is given to a particular person that their fast has broken. طيب? Three considerations. The force of them is that the person he ate knowingly. He was well aware of what he was doing. He wasn't absent-minded. You know, sometimes in Ramadan, you can be absent-minded, right? Your wife drove you crazy or whatever, and you're thinking about the situation. Your work is too difficult. You have homework, and it's just made you lose your mind a bit. And you happen to absent-mindedly eat something, right? This is overlooked, right? Because in, Buka, in, Buka, in Bukhari, 
rahimullah ta'ala, the Prophet said, Man akala nasiyan wa hu sa'imun, fal yutimma sawmahu, fa inna ma at'amahu Allahu saqahu. In Bukhari, the Prophet said, Whoever ate mistakenly and he was fasting, then let him continue with his fast, for verily the one who fed him and gave him drink was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu kind to us, that if we break our fast, uh, you know, out of being absent-minded, then it's not, we're not taken into account for that. We're not taken into account for that. The second one, okay, the first was that the person has to do it knowingly, but if he's absent-minded, he's excused. The second one is that the person shouldn't be compelled. This person shouldn't be forced to eat or drink or to do something which will break their fast, right? Shouldn't be compelled because the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Ibn Majah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَجَاوَزَ عَنْ أُمَّتِي الْخَطَى وَالْنِسْيَانِ وَمَسْتُقْرِهُ عَلَيْهِ That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has overlooked for my ummah the mistake, the thing which is done out of mistake or forgetfulness or that which they were done whilst being forced, compelled. Okay? So if the person is compelled to do something, compelled to eat or drink, like may Allah make ease for our brothers and sisters in China, millions are being forced to break their fast, then they're excused, right? They, it's either you don't fast or you die. So in that situation, you're excused. And the third and the last of it is that they must have knowledge of the ruling. Knowledge of the ruling. So maybe somebody's a new Muslim, right? Never had ex exposure to Islamic teachings. Maybe somebody lived under communism for so long. Never had exposure to Islamic teachings. They don't know these basic fundamentals. Due to that fact, it's overlooked, right? So if somebody, for example, didn't know that to have relationship with your family breaks your fast, and he said, this is the first time I've heard this. I absolutely didn't know then this person, it's overlooked for him. But is it overlooked in every situation? No. It's overlooked, like we said, if the person was away from access to Islamic knowledge. Not a person who lived in Qatar. A person who lived in Qatar his whole life and they said, I didn't know. لا. This one, he made a'rad. He chose to turn away from seeking knowledge because knowledge was everywhere. He could have easily found out, right? We're talking about situations where a person couldn't access knowledge or just became a new Muslim. So what did I give you as an example? I said, knowledge, if the person had a relationship, right, with their family, but he didn't know, he's excused. But this also has another point to it. The ulama, they say, you know, we mentioned that there's a kafara, there's an expiation for the one who does that, right? So this person, in this situation, another situation, he knows the ruling that this is haram, this act is haram for me to do. But he didn't know that there was a kafara to go with it, an expiation to go with it. So after doing it, he said, look, I didn't know about the kafara. I knew this was haram, but I didn't know about the kafara, that I have to free a slave or fast two months, etc., etc. He's not excused. Because the fact that he knew about the ruling of the act, but he didn't know about the kafara, he's not excused, right? Tayyip. Uh, with regards to eating and drinking, the majority of the ulama, jumhur ulama, they said eating is anything which passes through your throat. So if a fly comes, it passes through your throat. If somebody somehow throws a piece of paper in, through your throat, anything which goes into your stomach, right? According to the majority of the ulama, they say, khalas, this breaks your fast. Anything which goes through your, uh, to your stomach breaks your fast, whether it's mughadhi uh, or not, whether it's nutritious or not. Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, no, kulu wa shrabu, you know, the, the verses which pertain to abstaining from eating and drinking, obviously meant clearly that which is eating or drinking or that which is a replacement of eating and drinking. Like you take an injection which is full of nourishment for your body. That would break your fast, according to Ibn Taymiyyah. But if you didn't, if the injection wasn't something nutritious, then it wouldn't break your fast. So for example, another modern day application of this, uh, a camera which is put down your throat and it goes into your stomach, right? For whatever reason. According to the majority, that would break your fast. Right? Because they said anything which passes your throat breaks your fast. But Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said no. He said it has to be in the meaning of eating and drinking. Right? Nutritious. If it's nutritious, it breaks your fast. Not nutritious, doesn't break your fast. The Imam, he says, أو استعطى. أو استعطى. الصعود, الصعود is to take something through the nose that will reach the stomach. Right? To take something through the nose that will reach the stomach. Those of you who have the book, if you ever find that I miss out a sentence, please remind me. Because I think sometimes our text is just a little bit different, right? Su'ut is something 
which is put through the nose like a medicine of some type or something of that nature and it will reach the stomach. This is not allowed because the hadith in Tirmidhi of Luqit ibn Subra where the Prophet ﷺ said, Balik fil istinshaq illa an takuna sa'ima. Balik. Go to the extreme in making istinshaq, in taking nose in your water. Meaning do it to a full capacity unless you are fasting. Because if you are fasting, it may go through your throat, right? And break your fast. So the Prophet ﷺ said, don't do that if you are fasting. But when you make wudu, if you're not fasting, then you should put a lot of water up your nose and sniff, make istinshaq fully. But not if you are fasting, because it may go down through your throat and travel into your stomach. So this shows you that anything which you put through your nose, right, can also lead down to your throat and stomach, it will break your fast, right? It will break your fast. Oh, istiqa'a. The Imam, he says here, another thing which breaks your fast. The first of them, we mentioned eating, drinking. We mentioned uh, relationships with the family. We mentioned something now that uh, if it goes through your nose, and the Imam, he's going to say now, if the person causes himself to vomit. If the person causes himself to vomit, why? Because the hadith in Abi Dawood, Tirmidhi, and collected by Imam Nisa'i and others, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَن ذَرَعَهُ الْقَيْ مَن ذَرَعَهُ الْقَيْ فَلَا قَضَاءَ عَلَيْهِ Whoever is overwhelmed by vomit, meaning he didn't choose to do it, then there's nothing upon him. There's no making up of the fast. His fast didn't break. وَمَنْ اِسْتِقَاءَ فَلْيَقْضِي But the one who caused himself to vomit, because he didn't like his wife's food, he has to make up the fast, right? The one who caused himself to vomit, he has to make up the fast. Oh, istamna. The Imam, he says, oh, istamna. Or somebody who causes himself to ejaculate semen, uh, then this person, we're not talking about relationship, this person causes himself to ejaculate, then this person has to also make up the fast, but there's no kafara upon him, right? He causes himself to ejaculate in any which way, shape or form. Uh, there's no kafara, but he has to make up the fast and he should make tawbah to Allah Azawajal, and maybe he will lose all of his reward of the fasting. Why? The Prophet Sallallahu said in Ahmad, Rubba Sa'imin, Hadduhu min al-Siyam, al wal Atash. Some people, the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith of Imam Ahmad, all they get from their fasting is hunger and thirst because they didn't observe the sanctity of fasting, they didn't observe the limits of fasting. So all they get from their fasting is hunger and thirst, right? So we ask Allah Azawajal to protect, protect us from that. Or the person kisses his wife, right? The father kisses the mother, which is allowed in Islam. The father kisses the mother. Or he touches her, gives her a hug. So due to this, he ejaculates semen or madhi, okay? If due to this he ejaculates semen or madhi, then his fast is broken okay then his fast is broken the prophet sallallahu is narrated by aisha radiyallahu anha in sahih muslim kana nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam yuqabbilu wa the prophet sallallahu used to hug and used to kiss while he was fasting but he was the most able of you to control himself aisha radiyallahu anha said so it's as though she's telling us, you guys shouldn't do it because you're not like the Prophet ﷺ. You cannot control yourself. The Prophet had that much control. That's why it wouldn't lead him to any problems. So for him, it's allowed. But in any case, uh, it's allowed to do if you're sure that it's not going to lead you to anything further which will break your fast. But if you think in any way, shape or form, you just got married, it's going to break your fast, then you're not allowed to do that, okay? Or karara another hatta anzal. Or the person looked at something which will move, arouse his desires to the fact that he will, uh, to the level that he will ejaculate. So if, if he does that by looking, right, and then he ejaculates semen or madhi, then this also breaks his fast. Or hajama, or ahtajama. Or the person makes hijama, okay, the person makes hijama, which is blood cupping, uh, or the person doing it also. The Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith in Ahmad, Aftara al hajim wal mahjum That the one who makes the hijama, okay, and the one who is having it done, then their fasting is broken. We can understand that the one who is having the hijama done to him, his fasting is broken because the removal of blood may make him weak. So they say due to this, uh, this is one of the illa. This is one of the reasons why they say it breaks the fast. Another reason they say is ta'abudi. This word ta'abudi, uh, illa at ta'abudi, 
means that it's just you have to submit to Allah You didn't know the reason for it, but you submit to Allah in it. Okay? So they say that the one who is having cupping, the illa is either because he becomes very weak or because it's illa ta'abudi. It's just submitting to Allah. We don't understand why, but we submit to Allah for those who take this opinion. But there's an important question. Why the one who is doing the hijama to the person? Why does his fast break? So Ibn Taymiyyah, he said that in that time when the ruling came down, the people would make hijama. Part of the hijama was that the one doing the hijama to the person would suck the blood out from the area, right? And so some of the blood would go through the person's mouth. So he said that is one of the reasons why it would break the person's fasting, okay? So today, of course, people use different methods. The Imam, he says, talking about all those things that we've mentioned that break the fast, the Imam, he says, Amidan. The person had to do it with intent. Right? Not compelled or forgetfulness. For those things previously to break, it had to be done amidan with attend. He had to be aware that he was fasting. So not out of um, uh, absent mindedness. Right? So if he did that with intent and being aware that he was fasting, then these things would break his fast. And these things would break his fast. وَإِن فَعَلَهُ نَاسِيًا أَوْ مُكْرِهًا لَمْ يُفْسِدْ لَمْ يُفْسِدْ but if he, did the, if he did those things, whilst he was compelled or forgetful or he didn't know the ruling, then this does not break his fast, okay? But going back to the information, the further information we gave. The Imam says, وَإِن طَارَ إِلَىٰ حَلَقِهِ إِلَىٰ حَلَقِهِ ذُبَابْ أَوْ غُبَارْ أَوْ تَمَضْمَدَ أَوْ إِنْسْتَنْشَقَ فَوَصَلَ إِلَىٰ حَلَقِهِ مَا The Imam, he's giving some more situations now where a person's fast is not broken, okay? He says it could be the case that uh, a fly comes to the throat of a person. This doesn't break the fast. Why? Unintentional. There's no intention here, right? For the person to eat or drink. Or the person is making madmada. What's madmada? When you make wudu, you wash your mouth. And some water goes down his throat. The person's fast doesn't break. Why? No intention. Again, right? Or he makes istinshaq. He takes water through his nose. Again, he didn't intend to do so. So none of these will break his fast. Or the person has an erotic thought and it causes to ejaculate, then this doesn't break his fast. Right? Why? No intention. But the previous one, the look is different, right? Because he's intending to look. Here, thoughts you cannot really control. But if a person sits and he thinks and he brings to himself those thoughts and those images and he makes inzal, okay, then his fast is broken. Okay? Then his fast is, in, is broken. Or a person, he puts some type of medication in his private part. This only applies to the male, not to the women. Okay? <coughs> if he does this, then it doesn't break the fast, right? Why doesn't it break the fast? Somebody has to put some type of medication into his private part. La Allah. May Allah protect us. Why does this uh, not break his fast? Very good, Ahsant. It doesn't reach to the stomach, right? This is not one of the ways. This is not a manfad. This is not a channel to the stomach, right? This is not a channel, a channel to the stomach. With regards to eye drops and ear drops, this is not generally known to be a channel to the stomach. But the ulama, they say, if through experience you know that generally when you do eye drops or ear drops, because some people have issues with their ear drums, then it goes through to your throat, then you're not allowed to take the eye drops or ear drops. But if you feel that it's not going to go through to your throat, then you can take the eye drops and the ear drops, right? So the Imam says, Or a person has a wet dream. Why the wet dream doesn't break the fast? No intention. Didn't intend to do it, right? Or the person, he's, he's overwhelmed with uh, vomit. Then this person, his fasting is not broken. The Imam says in the last three sentences, وَمَنْ أَكَلَ يَظُنُّهُ اللَّيْلِ فَبَانَ نَهَارَ أَفْطَرَ So whoever eats thinking that now Maghrib has come, but it turned out to be that in fact it wasn't the time for Maghrib, then he has broken his fast. Why? Because they say, Al-Asl, Biqa' al nahar The reality of the situation is that it remained to be daytime. The, the foundation of the situation that is that daytime remained. Right? So he ate in daytime thinking that it was night. So he, his fast is broken. The Imam says, وَمَنْ أَكَلَ شَاكًا فِي طُلُوءِ الْفَجْرِ لَمْ يُفْسِدْ صَوْمُهُ But if a person eats because he's not sure that Fajr has come about, right? A person eats 
because he's not sure has the sun, you know, is it time for Fajr or not? He can't hear the Adhan, he can't find his uh, calendar, whatever. Then this person, his psalm is not broken. Why? Because the asal biqa al layl. The asal, the reality of the situation or the foundation of the matter is that it's still nighttime until he's sure that it's daytime, right? But of course, these, this situation now, day and age, it's very easy to find out, right? The adhan, you can hear it everywhere. Check your phones, check your calendars. It's very easy. The Imam says the last sentence we'll take. And if the person eats out of doubt whether it has, the sun has set or not, then this will break his fast because the asal is biqa and nahar, because the foundation is that it's still um, daytime. Taib? We'll stop here, inshallah. Any mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan. If you have any questions on the topic or clarifications, then feel free, inshallah. Wa jazakumullah khaira.